Hey again everybody, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well from chilly Sholo, Arizona. Well, we haven't even begun winter yet and already the wind chill factor here is uh, is brutal. Uh, last night it got down to 23 was the lowest. Uh, when I woke up about 8 a.m. to make coffee, I did still have running water inside the RV. However, how much of that can it take? It, it wasn't it wasn't a deep freeze. It, it was definitely very very cold last night, and I think I'm I'm lucky. I think I was lucky this time. Uh, the lowest I've ever gone is 22 in in Miranda. It's also very, very windy still. I'm like hugging the side of my RV just to keep from feeling the full force of, of the wind. Uh, today's video, we gotta talk about something else that is a very common problem out here in the Arizona desert, and that is rodents. We're gonna talk rodents. Thanks for joining me guys. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad internet, link below in the video description. Um, this is a topic that uh, oftentimes on my channel I have purposely not talked about um, because it's not really controversy. It's just some people don't like the way you treat rodents. Um, I'm more of a, I love all animals, but there are some pests out there that don't serve any other purpose except to destroy your property. And uh, as you've probably noticed uh, in Arizona, a lot of people pop open the hood of their vehicles. In fact, Kevin has over here. I'm sure you've seen this from uh, plenty of other RVs. The hood open, uh, some lights probably shining at night, some, some solar lights on the ground that shine up uh, because it's said that uh, mice and rodents and rats they 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 only like dark cold places so if you give it lots of light and air they might not go in there kevin's also got this stuff anti rat pro and so he'll spray that on, on the wires now I'll, I'll just let you know i have had lots of friends have damage to their vehicles most of the time it's when they're not using those vehicles but they can get into your car, they can get into your RV, they can get into your buildings and they can chew wires and nest and they'll just stay happy all winter in the warmth of your property. And you don't wanna have problems with them chewing on the wires under your hood. And I especially do not want them in the shed getting into all of my collectibles and stuff in there. So I have never, <laughs> never had a problem with mice chewing on any of the, the wires of any of my vehicles or RVs in my entire life. Which is strange because so many of my friends have. However, this RV moves every single day and the engine starts up and you go down the road. Uh, when you sit like this, that's when the mice may come over and find a nice place to live and for the whole winter inside your RV. So I have two ways I'm going to try to keep mice away while I'm gone and while I'm driving. One of them is something that I have used in the past that has worked really well. So we'll start with that one. It's, uh, it's a mouse trap. <laughs> Believe it or not, um, it is the absolute best mouse trap ever invented in my opinion. It is the only thing that worked. When I got back to my house in Carbondale after being gone six months, this was full with 19 mice or rats or whatever you, you want to call it. This is made by Rhine Traps, and I'm going to put a link below in the video description. Although I purchased this with my own money, it, it works, and it's an American-made company. It consists of this plate that goes on top of any five-gallon bucket and a little swivel thing there. Uh, inside, we've also got the little ladder. Let me pull that out. Uh, you have some options. Um, you could just leave nothing in there and you could just every day open this up, take it out, take it out to the field and let them play in somebody else's yard. Uh, or if you really have a pest problem, if they're getting into your chicken coop, um, if they're chewing wires and you're done with them, you can add a little bit of water to this. And once they fall in there, they won't be able to swim. So they'll go to mousy heaven. Yeah. Oh boy. 
All right, so you put the little ramp guy on there like that, and then up in here, you smear a little bit of peanut butter and some bird seed or peanuts or something on the top of this yellow part. What happens is little mousies go, doo -doo 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 -doo. ooh, what's up here, what's up here? They get on this little platform right here and everything's fine. Oh, hey, I smell peanut butter, let's go over here. As soon as they get past this point, that's why they call this the, let me see, flip and slide. Ryan Traps Flip and Slide. They, they plop in there. I'll uh, show you a video on YouTube. Oh, it's windy. I'm losing everything here. I'll show you a video on YouTube. Let me tell you guys, it works. It's not a gimmick. It flat out works and it works better than anything I've ever tried for keeping mice away. So I liked it so much that I went back on Amazon and I bought a two pack and got two more. So I'm gonna have one in the trailer. I'm gonna have one in that trailer over there for the motorcycle. I'm also going to put one in my storage unit here in Sholo. And you know, no matter how I think about it, I don't know how they're gonna be able to get in because, well, actually, if you look, I do see some light right there. Interesting, yeah. So, in the meantime, I'm gonna set it up right here with the little ramp right there near that wall right there, and hopefully when we come back, we'll be disposing of some uh, mousy mouses, and it'll keep all of my stuff in here safe, right? Like I say, there, there's no guesswork to that. Um, I know that those work, and uh, I, pretty much know that all of my stuff here in Arizona is going to be okay while we get on the road. But what about the RV and the car? Well, I'm going to try something new. <laughs> so that's why I'm letting you know. I'm going to update you about this later on, but I am going to try something new that I've not seen anybody talk about or review. I went on to Amazon after watching a YouTube video. Uh, I watched a YouTube video where someone said they installed these and never had any mice. I don't know about the effectiveness, but I bought a two pack of this ultrasonic rodent repellent for automobiles. It's a 12 volt, I guess it emits a light and an audible sound under your hood that mice don't like, rats don't like, so rodents won't come into your engine bay here. This one sounds like a gimmick. However, the beautiful thing about Amazon is that you can leave reviews and you can hear from people who say these stupid things work. Okay, I'll try it. Oh, look at my two kitties in the window. There's Tara and there's Opie and the Christmas tree. Don't you bite my tree, Opie. You, you leave my tree alone, Opie. Hey, will you pop the hood, Opie? It, the button's back there. Will, you, will we pop it? Thank you. All right, so there's the device in my hand so you can see how big it is. It comes with all the wiring and some zip ties to attach it. All you need to power this on is 12 volt. So there's positive, there's negative. I just got to splice into those and then find a nice place to zip tie it to, like maybe right there. And then the other, only other thing is to consider is that you will obviously have a power draw from this. It's, I don't think it's gonna be that much, uh, but if you are going to store your RV for, for six months out here in the desert and not touch it, and this is gonna be on, uh, I still believe you'd probably have a dead battery. So combined with this, you might also need something like um, one of those trickle charger solar panels. You could hook that up at the same exact time with positive and negative there. And then your solar panel can go in, in the dash of the RV and then it'll just kind of maintain the battery while you're gone as well. But um, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be giving an, an, an update about this. It's just, this is a hard one to compare to anything because again, I don't pop my hood up. I don't put lights on it. I just I just drive. And I'm going south this winter anyway. I'm not going to be here. Now, next summer when I'm here and the RV possibly might not be moving as much, we'll be able to tell if this is doing a difference. Uh, Kevin, camper van Kevin, also raised another concern, and that was with that frequency that it's letting out that, that keeps mice away, is that gonna bother the kitties? Is that gonna bother the puppies? How far does it really go? And all those kinds of questions. And it, it is something I'm, I'm concerned about. So I, I'm going to get this installed and then 
I'm gonna see how the kitties are doing. I'm gonna make sure. And if it, if I will update you in, in, in a few days if this is not working or if it's too much for the kitties and they seem stressed out or something. Um, but I, I did search and it says that it's safe for pets. It says it, but I don't know for sure. All right, it's installed, it's zip tied, it's plugged in. I don't hear anything. <laughs> I guess that's the whole point. It's a frequency that humans aren't supposed to hear. Let me go grab Opie. All right, I know it's windy. Do, do you hear anything? Your ears aren't twitching. Are you okay? Yeah? Do, do you hear something? No, you can't explore. I'm going to hold you. It's right there. You don't hear it? He seems okay. Let me know what you guys think in the uh, video comments below. Let me know if you think it's bad for pets. He doesn't seem to be bothered. Let me know. Do you think we even need that? I think we'll be okay. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Tara. Tara. Let's see. What else we got going on? Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh... It's it's a slight upgrade, okay? I, I probably would have been just fine for the rest of my life there with that 19-inch TV. But, you know, I had two of these from the shop, two of these 32-inchers. And so uh, I, <laughs> I swapped out the 19-inch for the 32. And it's secured there on the back really, really well. I just got to find a place to put the other security monitor at least it's not another 65 incher that takes up the whole window, right? This way, I, I still have access to the outside. I haven't blocked anything. Um, it also will not affect my, my driving because in the driver's seat, I can easily just look out that side. The problem that I had with Miranda was that I blocked basically this window here, which made it really hard to see that blind spot. And that was not a good thing. Here in Frida, if I wanted to, I could put a 65 incher back back here. And then when I sit down, I just don't need it. So I'm not going to do it. Opie, why is the RV so messy? Yeah, it's your fault, Dad. It's totally your fault, man. It, it is. It's my fault. I, I need to get on top of it. So uh, I, I'm happy with that. I think 32 inch, from, at least from this seat, is, is really practical and comfortable. And uh, yeah, I'm digging it. I had also had two basically really, really hot summers back to back, uh, although it wasn't quite as humid where I was at here this time. Um, I'm really enjoying the cold right now. I don't want it to last much longer, but but for right now, this is, this is actually a really nice reset here to have some very cold weather where I get to enjoy my hoodies and my long jeans, you know? Yeah. This was uh, Carolyn's spot. She just left yesterday. I tell you what, I have not seen a harder working woman than she had worked here while she was enjoying this spot. Look at this incredible walkway she built out here in the desert, digging up old rocks and putting in these flat ones and then putting little rocks in between them and, and a wall and a little walkway to her RV. The cold uh, chased her out, so she didn't quite finish, but I believe she's gonna come back next summer and work on it as well it's just really cool what what she did here with her spot she also put together this part over here you know th that that was an old rat pack area that had a bunch of mice and stuff in there and now there's a nice little bed of roses we're uh we're on we're on day three here trying to catch a kitty we uh the gang and i we had we had heard and seen a black cat around here that was crying sounded like they were lost and hungry and that had happened three nights in a row and then we all went out to ray's barbecue the other night and there was a sign on the front door lost cat a picture of a black cat and i went uh i think i need to call this lady and see how close she is she's about seven minutes away uh she brought the trap herself she came out with the flashlight one night and tried to find the kitty we couldn't we couldn't locate the kitty and uh it doesn't seem like he or she is hungry don't know where that kitty's at i haven't i haven't heard the meowing in a little while it's kind of sad but kevin says that we've got like like a mountain lion or cougar out here so he had some on one of his videos there's some pretty big paw prints right in here 
So that's why he's got a trail cam there. He's got lots of cameras on the property, but specifically trying to catch that mountain lion, large, large kitty with, with that camera right there. We'll see. But yeah, oh, sunshine, that feels good. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to projects, guys. I'm going to take tomorrow off. I will see you in uh, two days. So y'all be well. Uh, Tara and Opie and I will see you soon. Bye.